Hi guys, it's Nicola. Today we're going to have a look at the outline of the chemistry exam and particular areas to focus on in your revision. So first up, how long is our exam? The exam itself is three hours. And in that three hours, you have to answer eight questions. Now, of course, being smart individuals that you are, you're not answering eight questions. You're answering a minimum of eight questions. I want nine. That extra question just gives you a little bit of a cushion that if something, you get halfway through your question and there's something nasty in there and you spot it and you go, oh, sugar, I don't like that question. Then it just gives you a little bit of a backup plan so that if something like that happens, that it's not really going to affect your overall mark because you've already budgeted that extra question into your time frame. So the actual outline of the exam. Okay, so first up, section A, apologies. The exam is split into two sections. Section A is the experiments. Now, for anyone who's like, oh, I don't really like the experiments, can I skip them? No, you absolutely can skip the experiments because they're not just going to come up in section A, they also come up in section B, which we're seeing more and more often in, in the more recent exam papers. You will always get an experiment question in section B as well, so don't skip them. Right, the very first question on the paper, question one. Question one is always a titration. Now there's quite a few of them, but they do follow certain patterns. Now. For the titrations, frankly, the only thing that's different from one titration to the next is what you added to what and what the colour change was. That's it. A lot of people get bogged down in the calculations. Don't. The first three steps in every calculation is exactly the same, regardless of whether you're looking at a water titration or a redox or an acid base one. It doesn't matter. The beginning part of every calculation, the bit that's going to get you the most marks, is the same for every single one. There might just be very slight differences with what you have to do at the end, like calculate the amount of iron in an iron tablet or the percentage weight per volume of hypochlorite and bleach or something like that. So titration isn't up there. Would I answer that? Yes. The titration question is great. You're always going to be asked for 12 marks, one of the procedural things. How did you add something to the conical flask, etc.? What was the color change that you saw? There's going to be a 15 to 18 mark calculation. These are very predictable and they're great. Question two, this is the organic experiment. Now, I hate predicting organic experiments because there's not that many of them. And if you learn off your organic experiments and know every single one of them, they're the ones that actually come up quite frequently in section B as well. So an organic experiment is always question two, but you could also see it in section B as well for considerable marks. We're talking like 20, 12 to 20 marks in section B. So it's worth knowing your organic experiments inside out. Question three is the wild card. Now, when I say wild card, it can be absolutely anything, but there are some experiments that are more popular than others. In question three, my top pick would be rates of reaction, a water titration or a water experiment, and potentially another organic experiment. It's called the heat of neutralization. They're my top picks for that, but it could be absolutely anything. Any of the mandatory experiments that are not covered in those two questions can come up in question three, but it tends to be a little bit more predictable than the others. Now, section B. across two boards. Section B, now it'll be a little bit different with how you were going to answer these questions. I'm just going to grab another marker. From section A, from question one, two and three, you need to answer two questions. You can answer any two of them. If you choose to, you could actually answer all three if you wish. You have to pick up eight questions across the whole exam paper and two of them must be from section A. If you did three from section A and five from section B, minimum five from section B, that would also be absolutely fine. Very few people will do that though because the experiments are a little bit longer. 
Now, in section B, the first question I would definitely recommend you go for is question four. Question four is the short questions, and it covers the whole course. There are some questions when you look at question four that are highly predictable. There's usually a question on electronic configuration or assigning oxidation numbers or writing conjugate acid bases, that kind of thing. They're lovely, they're really short, but the definitions are going to sting you here if you haven't learned them. So short questions, gold. Question five. This is one of the most popular questions on the paper and I'm a little iffy on it. It tends to be one that everyone underestimates and it's like, oh, that's such an easy question. But when you really dig into it, it's not. And it's actually quite hard. This is all about bonding trends in the periodic table, the periodic table itself, who discovered what, how bonding affects boiling points. It can be anything like that and radioactivity. So it's all stuff really that you cover in fifth year. So I don't like calling it the basics. It's like bonding. And trends, etc. Now question six, I'm actually going to do it on the other board. I adore this question because it is beautiful and it looks way worse than it actually is. It's a lovely question. This is the next organic chemistry question. And this is all about fuels and hydrocarbons. Now, definitely do that question. It's great. It's so easy to pick up marks and it's really short. It does have a calculation towards the end of it for about 15 marks, but go back and do all of the past paper questions. They're all exactly the same. So whether or not it might look like the most ugly calculation you've ever seen in your life, it's really not. It's great and it's really straightforward. That calculation is much easier than a titration calculation or even a moles calculation. So it just, I would highly recommend that one. Question seven. I'm going to put question seven and nine in here together because what doesn't come up in question seven is going to come up in question nine and they are interchangeable. So it's not like pH always comes up in question seven. That's not always the case. Question seven and nine will be pH, acids and bases, rates of reaction and equilibrium or some combination of those. Now, I do recommend question seven and nine. It, pH and acids and bases can be a little tricky when it comes to the calculation part, but lots of practice, get used to using your calculator for them and do the past paper questions. If you do the last 10 years, you'll be fine for those. Um, I would recommend question seven and nine because it's easy to pick up marks in them. Question eight, apologies. Question eight. This is the next organic question, but it's the synthesis. This is hands down one of my favorite questions, along with question six. I will always do those two. So if it was me sitting down to do the exam paper, if you put a mock paper in front of me and asked me to do it, they're the first two that I always do because they're straightforward, they're highly repeatable, and it's really easy to pick up marks in them if you know what you're talking about. Same with every question, really, but anyway. Now, in the synthesis question, the, this one, if it's following a typical example, will fit on half an A4 page for 50 marks. It's great. Question nine, I've already talked about, of course I have. Question 10. Now, question 10 is quite a popular question. It's where it has three parts, A, B, and C, and you have to answer any two. Now, some people, when they get into one of these, kind of, they tend to be a little bit more difficult than they think. That's not always the case, but in question 10, there's always a moles question. And sometimes when they get halfway through the moles and it's just not working out, they'll then go back and do another part in question 10. And that's absolutely fine. I would recommend that if that happens to you. Now, question 10, absolutely anything can come up here. It covers the core material. There's always a moles question. So a 25 marker moles calculation, and it's usually quite a nice one. 
but there could also be a 25 mark question on bonding, intermolecular interactions and stuff like that. It's also quite common for another organic chemistry question to come up here, so just be on the watch for that. The last question on the paper is question 11 and it also has three parts. A, B and C and you will answer two as well. However, question 11 is a little bit different to question 10. Now again, it can be any core material, but question 10C, that is the option. Now the option topic in chemistry, there are two option topics. We have industrial and, and um, atmospheric chemistry and the other one is another branch of electrolysis and materials chemistry. The option, some people don't study it, which means they have A and B that they can answer from and they have to answer A and B. But having the option is a great buffer for your exam because now if you know you can nail this one, then you have a choice between the other two parts as well. So you have option one and option two. Both of them will come up in part C. So you don't have to answer both parts to get the 25 marks. Now, as you can see, there's quite a lot of choice on the exam paper. And it's quite helpful to know before you start the year, what are your strengths? Is there anything that you would particularly gravitate towards? Is there anything that you would definitely answer in your exam? As far as I'm concerned, out of what I've just laid out on the board, there's one topic that sticks out like a sore thumb and it just is something that you cannot skip if you are going to do well in chemistry and it's organic chemistry. It accounts for approximately 45% of your exam. So you have to focus on it. It comes up in question two, question six, question eight, and there's usually some sort of a 25 mark question in question 10 or 11 that also contains organic chemistry. So that's quite significant. But if you already know that you're going to answer question two, six, eight, and whatever, which one comes up in 10, eight or 10 or 11, then you're already in a very strong position at the start of the academic year. 